Well, it was to be a trip out to the south coast of England aboard Wayne's 17-foot boat, the Wilson Flyer. It's a pretty new boat, this one. He's always had Wilson Flyers. This one's got a nice, I think it's aluminium trailer, and it goes down the ECA slip at a rate of knots. Do not stand in the way of it. That's how they launch their boats here at great speed down into Langston Harbour. It is, in fact, a lovely, flat, calm day. So what Wayne does here is he undoes a what's called a sort of safety strap there, and that's just in case the main webbing strap breaks on the run down there. You need that backup strap. And uh, I've now put one on mine because you never know when that strap's going to break. So you just release the ratchet mechanism here, bit of slack off, unclip the boat. It's all ready. Bit of beef, bit of one-handed beef on mine because I've got the camera in the other hand. Slide it down off the trailer into the water. So some people keep their boats, you know, on pontoons, in marinas, can be quite expensive. This way is a cheaper option, although it is labor intensive. And there's another boat in the background. Another bunch of guys get ready to go out for a early morning session in the winter. This is guys, in the winter. A nice, flat, calm day. So we're heading out to one of uh, Wayne's Marks. See what we can catch out there. The target species is going to hopefully be a conger. Now, open ground conger, they do move around quite a bit. And on the south coast, some of the best months are literally November, December. Now, shore fishing guys, the conger shore fishing will in fact probably confirm that, that. You'd think the summer months would be good for conger, but in fact, getting out on a boat, or even off some of the rocky shoreland, can be excellent for conger in the months of November and December. Whether they're fattening up, ready for the winter, and the cold weather, I don't know. It doesn't appear that you get them in January. Now this, a uh, contraption here, for those guys who don't know, is called an Alderney ring. It goes around the anchor line. It's a buoying system for pulling an anchor up at ease, effectively. So you can see here from Wayne's uh, anchor rope storage tub, it goes out through the center of the Alderney ring. You just let it all go out, and then when you've got sufficient anchor rope out there, you put the buoy and the Alderney ring over the side of the water and that will set in the tide, it just floats until the anchor pulls tight, it sets in the tide, and then when you steam it out at an angle, the anchor comes up and rests on that buoy. The buoy, in fact, would you believe, pulls the anchor up, it saves you going around the bow of the boat, as I used to, a rather dangerous way of pulling up an anchor. Now let's get fishing. Well, we're here at the uh, nab grounds again, off the south coast of uh, England, and it's winter, December, Lovely day though, very, very nice. Little bit of mist hanging around, but nothing to, uh, to worry us, nice visibility. Um, what we're after today is conger. Um, this time of year, you get conger quartering all the open ground. Normally, you look for structure for conger, obviously wrecks are, are well known, and um, reefs of course. But come the winter time, usually sort of November onwards, for a couple of months, you get some quite big conger quartering quite clean ground. Um, and in fact, uh, inshore, uh, of us for, by about three miles. I actually had a, a, a huge conger, at least 80 pounds. You might be able to hear the whistling. Uh, we're being winter, we do fancy a nice cup of tea. I can't be doing with a flask rubbish. Is that a little butane cooker, Wayne? Yeah, yeah, a little, uh, just a little camping stove. I mean, um, I've got no worries about using it aboard the boat. Uh, you have to be very careful with fuel and anything like this, of course. But these these stoves, if they're used correctly, they're pretty safe. Um, and I always disconnect the bottle after use. That'll be hot, obviously. I've got asbestos fingers, so I'm not particularly fast. It was very hot, mine. Um, I always disconnect the gas, and I'll actually take that bottle out. So there's no bouncing, there's no chance of it. Uh... Safety on the boat. Yeah, and I mean, you, you've got to be a bit half careful, you can't muck about, um, he says, and oh, wait, watch out, oh, there we go, let's see, there you go. So, uh, all I'll do is, that'll go, lid will go back on that, that'll go back in the cabin. Just seems a lot more civilised having a, a cup of tea made with a kettle, and of course, if you want to heat some food up, you've got that option as well. So you don't fancy my rancid flask then, Wayne? Do you know something, flask? I don't like tea enough. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a tea um, connoisseur, can I say? I like a nice cup of tea. 
And flask tea, it's just, it's rank. You know, I can't, I can't drink it personally. And coffee, again, in a flask, it's a little bit nicer for about the first hour. And then it just starts to go musty and tainted. And I can't be doing with it. I like some nice proper cup of tea. The reason we're making a cup of tea at the moment is because it's uh, slack water. And, um, but well, you do get fish on slack water, of course you do. You get, uh, particularly rays. Um, you get the odd nice cod over slack. But it does tend to be the quiet time. So, while it's quiet, we'll make ourselves a nice cup of tea. Okay, so traces today. Nice strong mono, this is 80 pounds. Basically 80 pounds for conga is about the minimum I would use. Not a long trace. It's a fairly small tide here today. So what's that, metre? You could go shorter than that even. I don't like going longer than that. Conga twist. Again, single hook. Panels for me and conga really don't go together. They twist like chubby checker. They really are serious, serious things. When you get a, any eel sort of 40 pounds upwards, it's a powerful, powerful creature. And um, if there's a panel and there's a spare hook flying around, you've got to be a bit half careful. It'll drive one straight through your hand, no problem. Hooks, that's a 6 0 strong O'Shaughnessy. Ideal, really. You can go to 8 0, no problem. The swivel, nice, strong, again, 100 pound swivel there. So there's the trace. Bait, uh, today, we've got one of their favourite, actually, is a uh, cuttle. Um, you can see where I'm probably panned down to that. There's a lovely big old cuttlefish there. Nice big chunks, don't be afraid. I mean, you can use a whole head, half a head, whatever you like, nice big bait. Um, funny enough, congas often give a very tentative bite. Not always, they can, they can hammer a rod over, but they can also give a very tentative bait. I tend to, lean into congas quite early because I don't want them deep hooked um, ideally lip hooked because that way if you get to the side of the boat far far easier to t-bar them off as I say today we're using cuttle but don't be frightened of putting a live bait on um, if you distinctly um, chasing congas they're very predatory they do like a live bait a dead bait will work just as well of course you know flappered but um, a nice live moving pout or whiting they really can't resist it. And of course, you've got the uh, added bonus as well that you can pick up a nice bass. Um, rays, rays are far more predatory than people think, particularly undulates. Um, I've put many live baits down and had a, an undulate hammer them. So, uh, as I say, cut was the bait today, but you can use um, a fish bait, you can use uh, a squid, and they'll take uh, all three of those baits very readily. Well, uh, as I said uh, earlier, it's a very small tie today. Um, it's a 4.2 tide, that probably doesn't mean much to people who don't live in this area, of course, but our tides seem to range from about 3.8 up to about 5 metres, so a 4.2 is, is right on the lower, uh, lower side. As a consequence, I wouldn't put that on, you know, pound cannonball, absolutely no need for it. That's what I'm going on today, what's that, 6, six ounces, 150 grams, whatever that is. I should know, shouldn't I? I don't. Um, I tend to pick a weight up and think that's about right for the tide. But anyway, I feel it's about six ounces. Um, someone no doubt will correct me if I'm uh, wrong. So, little link there, easy link that I have. Going on to my trace, very, very simple, running ledger. As I say, going to my hook, I shall use a strip of cuttle there. There we go, nice thick, you can see the mantle on that cuttle, lovely and thick. The ink, by the way, will absolutely make a rancid mess of your boat. Um, so if I was you, I'd keep it away from anything you don't want to get too manky or you can't clean. I'm only going to go through this twice. I leave the skin on sometimes because it makes it much, much tougher to rip off. So if we've got whiting around and they're rattling at that, that's going to be a lot harder to pull off. There's a little bit of a, a, a loop there, but there's no tides so that's not going to spin. You could put that through a couple more times. So that piece comes up above here and then elasticate it on so it's I do that actually if the tide was running harder it's not so that that will do for here and that's all I'm going to put down and that will pick up cod conger bass um, lots and lots of uh, fish will take a nice well presented piece of cuttlefish this is uh, only a small reel my other reel is slightly bigger they've got 30 pound um, that's Berkeley Whiplash actually. This is 20 pound, I think this is a, a gardener braid. Good quality braid, it's usually nice, nice diameter, thinner. You can buy um, the Chinese braids and 
I believe that a lot of people are very, very happy to use it. I stick with what I know. Um, it's strong, I know it won't break on me. I have bought braid in the past, um, spoiled a reel with it, like 30 pound class braid, and it snapped like cotton in a number of occasions. And then I've just gone home, cut my losses, took the whole lot off. It's f false economy, really. You just want to buy something decent. It is very expensive braid, too expensive for what it is, I'm sure. Um, so if you can just get hold of something you're confident in. As I say, this is only 20. On my other reels, it's 30. Um, 30 pound braid, I'd say, is about right for your all round general fishing. Well, it's been one of those days, I'm afraid. It's been very, very quiet. Hedge my bets and put a live whiting on this rod. And uh, he's been sitting there for, oh, hang on, is he off? He's <laughs> Is he come off? Yeah, he's gone. Oh, my word. He was on there, wasn't he? Good fish. Yeah, there was something heavy on there as well. It, it could have been an eel, it could have been a cod, but it was heavy. And the point is, it stayed down. And when it stays down deep, it does tend to make you think it's a cod rather than an eel. Eels tend to come up in the tide a bit more, as, as do rays. There's the bait. He is actually still alive. And I wonder what cops hold of him. I think a conger would have crushed it somehow. What do you reckon, Wayne? It's, Put a bite mark on him? Yeah, you'd imagine so, but it's impossible to say. But there was a fair bit of weight on there when it originally went over. So, uh, you can go back down for another spell. Well, <laughs> I've already dropped two, uh, what felt to me like cod. You know, that sluggish head shakes. And um, the only two decent bites of the day, to tell you the truth. And this is now the third reasonable bite. Um, I couldn't tell you this feels slightly different, so it could be a small eel, which would be uh, typical, I feel. It could be a cod, you just don't know. I like the way it's staying deep now, so it's a little bit twangy, but I'm going to call it a cod. We'll soon see, I know. I feel it might be wrapped around my live bait. Uh, rig which wouldn't be too clever and it's been one of those days it really has you know we've uh, as i say i've dropped two very nice bites and when i say dropped we all take the mickey out of mates when you're fishing with them they drop a fish unless you see it you don't ever know how well it's hooked it could just be in the skin of the lip you just don't know unless it's but you know genuinely bad angling where you're trying to pull the fish's head off or you're allowing too much slack or something like that at the end of the day there is a bit of luck involved in uh in how the fish is hooked. Good old bend in the rod. Yeah, it's only a, a 18 to 25 pound rod, so you will get a decent bend in it. And in a dogfish, that's for sure. I just want to see it now. Yeah, we got to that stage of the day. Yeah. I, I want to call it a cod because it's just going, it's staying yeah. down. It's hanging, yeah. Yeah. There isn't a lot of tide now. It's eased off quite a bit. This is where he looks silly and it's not, and it's something else. Oh, it's a cod, see the lead. Yeah, it's, a see cod. The lead. it's a cod. There, there he go. is. It felt like a cod. There he is, he's a double. Not monster, but I'm happy to see it after the day we've had. I feel I might have dropped his uh, bigger brothers. Oh, come on, no, don't do that now. This is the sort of day it's been. Please don't do that. Give me kittens. There we go, back in. There you go. We're calling him caught, shall we? Oh my word, there goes my net. Yeah. That's yeah, a double anyway. Oh, he's a double, all right. Yeah, he'd be about. Well, I don't know how to call it, but. 12, is he? No, he's a bit bigger than that, I yeah, think. He goes bigger, yeah? Yeah, I think you'll find he's bigger. Was he on cuttle? Uh, yeah, that was on cuttle. Well, he's not a conger, but I'm going to say I'm happy with that. It's a cord, I've just weighed him on the boat. He's going to be a bit less than he was. He just coughed out a ton of water, but he was 15 pounds on the uh, digital scales on the boat. Be around about, I don't know, four, between 14 and 15, I'd say. But yeah, um, pleased, pleased with that. As we say, not a conger, but he'll do.
Well, no conga today on our conga trip, but we've had a nice cod in there, about 15 pounds. And uh, there's a nice angelate here. I'd say he's got to go about the same. I'm not going to weigh him, because um, I want to get him back quick. But they're handsome, handsome fish. This is quite a light coloured one, but... Uh, Lovely markings on him, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I mean, look at the thorns on the tail. I mean, it's not just thornbacks that have thorns. I mean, quite wicked they are, but... Uh, they're lovely fish, very um, common around this area. They're not a rare fish for us. We've uh, probably our most common ray. But um, they are lovely things. And look at the eyes, look at those eyes. They're absolutely stunning. Well, we've got a, uh, had a lot, did had a live pout on this one. And uh, that eel's taken him. Not a big eel, but you know, Give you a bit of sport on a quiet day. Maybe that drum block uh, made a difference, way. Oh, I can't see how it would have hurt, really. Well, off that decent conga we had, it's gone a bit quiet, the tide's starting to flow, so we're getting bites now. Probably pouting or whiting. There's been a couple of cod caught by the other boats. The fog has come down big time on us. Oh, nice whiting here. Now this one, if it doesn't fall off. That one, there, is definitely, I feel, isn't it, way frying pans on Definitely That's dinner. That's dinner. And that, that one's probably edible. Nice fish to catch off the beach, but this this one there, that's a decent, decent looking whiting. There's the fog horn. Let's get it in the fish box before we get mown down by a con intercontinental ship. There we go, it's a decent sized whiting. I think we're gonna keep that one for food. Don't know to keep the old fish for food at all. You're entitled to. Well, thankfully that fog eventually lifted and it was towards the end of the day. A lot of the boats took that advantage of that to make a run back to port. The last thing you want to do in the English shipping channel is to get caught out in there in that fog bank. So most of the boats up anchored and headed away from the fog bank. You don't need to get caught in that, especially at night. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Watch out for TA Outdoors and don't forget your download of The Awesome Angler.